this is Josh Rubin from East West Healing and Performance. Today I want to touch upon what is endometriosis. We see this a lot nowadays in our clients coming in our clinic, as well as a lot of the emails that flood our blog, our personal email, um, as well as phone lines. Um, it's very common. Um, who knows where it comes from, but as long as we know what things or what stressors can actually um, participate in it, we can actually pull, it ba pull each one back layer by layer and hopefully um, get the, the client closer to homeostasis or having balanced hormones, which is our goal, okay? So you start at the beginning of the slide, what estrogen does intrinsically, what progesterone does intrinsically, okay? The important thing here is um, Dr. Um, John Lee coined the term called estrogen dominance. What is estrogen dominance? It's when basically you have not enough progesterone to counterbalance estrogen, okay? doesn't matter if estrogen is high, normal or low. It just means that there's not enough progesterone. Progesterone is low, basically, and it can't counterbalance the effects. So if you look at the past couple slides showing estrogen and progesterone, if you look at someone that would be estrogen dominant, you look at all those things that estrogen does, you can see why we have a lot of the symptoms, weight gain, bloating, headaches, cancers, um, and other diseases secondary to being estrogen dominant. If you want to learn more about that, read the books that he's written. He's read a lot of books. What, the M what your MD hasn't told you about menopause, what your MD hasn't told you about premenopause, what your MD hasn't told you about, about fibroids, and on and on. So what is endometriosis? Okay, The bottom line is endometriosis is when the um, endometrial lining somehow gets outside the uterus. Okay, and It actually goes into the pelvic area. It gets into the bladder. Um, it gets into the ovaries or on the ovaries and things like that. The downfall of that is typically what happens during the first phase of a woman's cycle, which is the follicular phase when they're releasing more estrogen, you start to see increased blood flow to all these areas where the endometrial lining is. Okay, So there's a lot of blood flow and happens at the follicular phase or when the luteal and the follicular meet, progesterone starts to go up and you typically slough the uterine lining and you bleed you end up sloughing all these areas, which causes um, blood to kind of leak out everywhere in a sense, okay? And this excess blood where it's not supposed to be is what causes this pelvic inflammation. All this inflammation in the bladder, the uterus, the ovaries, the pelvic floor, and on and on. And it causes extreme pain because of these inflammation, okay? So now that we know what it is, um, how do we treat it, okay? It's obviously a larger topic than this YouTube clip, but I just want to bring some insight into it. Um, from my perspective, the bottom line is you need to do a lot of um, individualized assessments, working with a check practitioner, someone like myself, or a functional medicine or holistic doctor. You need to do a lab to figure out what's going on with the hormones. My recommendation, depending on age, if someone's younger, you can do what's called the single progesterone lab through BioHealth. Uh, it's the um, 255 if someone's you know in their 20s or teens. Someone's a little older, older, I typically recommend a full hormone profile panel, which is the 207 or 208 from BioHealth. We do those here. It gives us a graph of what's going on with the hormones throughout their cycle and where they are, if they're high, normal, or low. Okay? Then from, from there, we can supplement. Typically, we use supplements such as bioidentical progesterone and pregnenolone and DHEA. Dr. Lee typically recommends 30 to 50 milligrams per day. He's actually treated people with 80 milligrams. I haven't done that myself. I typically use a milligram based on the person and where their levels are. So that would be my first recommendation. My second would be to take a look into what else is going on in your life. Um, if you're on the pill, the pill is designed to create an basically estrogen dominance because progesterone is pro-gestation. It brings nutrients and oxygen to the fetus and estrogen actually pulls it away and asphyxiates the organs and fetus. So if you're estrogen dominant, you're not going to get pregnant. You could have a miscarriage, which is very common with women that are estrogen dominant. And if you're on the pill, this is one way or one thing that can facilitate endometriosis. Second thing is gluten. Gluten causes tons of widespread, infl widespread inflammation. So if people are eating gluten, which is an amino acid in most grains except corn, rice, and buckwheat, I'd fully eliminate it. Third thing is... Does the client drink out of plastic water bottles, use Tupperware, um, and buy foods that are boxed you know, in plastics? I'd eliminate those, as most of these plastics contain xenoestrogens, which mimic estrogen receptors and estrogen in the body, Okay, which can actually make the estrogen dominance more and more and more. Okay? The fourth thing is milk. 
you saw in one of my clips, xanthine oxidase is, is actually produced from the pasteurization and homogenation process, which can cause irritation in the arteries and veins, which can cause widespread inflammation and cause more and more pain. So I definitely eliminate pasteurized milk and homogenized milk. Fourth, which a lot of people don't think about is rough sex. If women, if the men are using condoms that have spermicidals on them, as well as women that use tampons that are bleached, these three things can cause local inflammation in the female organs, as well as um, local dysfunction, um, as well as give a false reading on whether or not you have a HPV virus. So you see women coming back with positive HPV. Well, that can actually be from having rough sex, as well as the spermicides and bleached tampons. So I'd eliminate all three of those. Not eliminate sex, just don't have rough sex, things like that. You can always buy non-bleached tampons, and the best way to have safe sex is just to, you know, make a choice and, and, and think uh, smart instead of um, trying to prevent it by wearing a condom, which can actually irritate a woman's uterine lining. Um, you know, the other thing I do is, besides supplementing them with the bioidenticals, I typically supplement with, with, with um, what's called DIM, Dindal Methyl, and actually supports phase two detoxification of the liver. The liver actually detoxifies estrogen, as well as it actually helps the body detoxify any excess estrogen in the body. So I supplement with that, the DIM and the bioidenticals, once I get a lab to know what's going on, okay? So hopefully we gave you some insight into what endometriosis is, what estrogen dominance is, what the hormones do in your body, and some things that actually can affect endometriosis and make it worse, as well as some basic things that can actually help facilitate the healing process. Obviously, it's a larger topic than this clip itself. We do a lot of individualized assessments. But if you have an endometriosis or know anyone with endometriosis or any of the related PMS symptoms, feel free to check out our blog on our website. It's a holistic health blog on our website at eastwesthealing.com. There's a lot of free resources on our re resource page on eastwesthealing.com. Or feel free to set, uh, give us a call to set up your free consultation or pop us an email um, so we can answer some questions that you might have or possibly give you some insight into the um, services and packages that we might have. Hope all is well and have a uh, happy and healthy day.